Quoting Dr. Sheng Jing Wu, one of the most prominent scientists of the 20th century, when girls are in elementary school, they think they can be anyone. They can do anything. All of a sudden, they get into high school and they get into science classes. And besides the fact that they are doing well or better than the boys in the class, they're looking towards their future and they see posters full of male scientists. They don't see themselves on the lab bench. They don't see where their place is. Science, though a quintessentially rational profession, has been plagued by irrational social biases. Women have always been underrepresented, underpaid, and unrecognized in science fields. The lack of recognition alone, however, does not represent the entirety of the problem. One of the biggest factors in this problem is their systematic exclusion from the academics. Lack of encouragement from a young age, restrictions on femininity, and outright rejections. Women in STEM face these and a lot more. Sometimes, however, we see a star push away the dust around it and shine bright despite the challenges. Dr. Kamla Sohani is one of the stars. Dr. Kamla has a lot of first to her name, going on to become the first Indian woman, quoting, on whom the title of PhD in science was conferred. Kamla Bhagwat was born in 1912 in a highly educated family. Her father and uncle were among the first chemists to graduate from Indian Institute of Sciences in Bangalore. Kamla had a supportive family and in-house role models, so it was no surprise when she decided to become a chemist herself. She finished her school at the top of her batch and enrolled into BSc Physics and Chemistry course at Bombay Presidency College under Bombay University. She topped her university batch again and graduated with proverbial flying colors. Born into an influential family with two alumni and topper of the university merit list, she thought her admission into IASC would be easy. She failed to account for the bias against women at that time. Her application was rejected. The director of the institute at that time was Nobel laureate Sir C. V. Raman. Sir Raman was a man of principles. One of them was, I am not going to take any girls in my institute, which was his reply to Kamla's father and uncle's request for reconsideration. Refusing to settle for any other institute or standing down against discrimination, Kamla persisted. She met Sir Raman and asked for reasons and assured him that she would complete her course with distinction. And yet she was ignored. Then 22-year-old Kamla resorted to Satyagraha in Raman's office. Sir Raman, unable to provide a valid official justification for the rejection, relented. He accepted Kamla's application with some conditions which she had to accept. He did not admit her as a regular candidate. She had to work late nights as per instructions of her guide, and she was not to, quoting, distract her male colleagues. Kamla was to later account at an event by Indian Women Scientists Association, quoting, Though Raman was a great scientist, he was very narrow-minded. I can never forget the way he treated me just because I was a woman. Even then, Raman did not admit me as a regular student. This was a great insult to me. The bias against women was so bad at that time. What can one expect if even a Nobel laureate behaves in such a way? Kamala wasn't the first woman at IISC. Neither was she the first to be treated unfairly by the institute. IISC only had permanent hostels for men. Women were allowed accommodation on a temporary basis on the campus. She and two other candidates in the hostel faced unsafe living conditions and other issues during this time. Sir Raman's wife, Mrs. Lokasundari Raman, was the warden of the women's hostel. Their request for a permanent hostel was denied by Mrs. Lokasundari on the basis that there were not enough women to warrant this. After a year, Saraman allowed Kamla to become a regular research candidate in biochemistry. She worked under Professor Srinivasaya, who had great influence on her. She studied the works of giants in biochemistry and also wrote letters to some. Her research was focused on proteins in milk and legumes, a subject of great importance due to nutrition issues in India at that time. Kamla submitted her research in 1936 and earned her MSc degree from Bombay University. 
After she left, Sir C. V. Raman started allowing more women candidates into the regular research programs. After a brief tenure at Hafkin Institute for Training, Research and Testing in Bombay, Kamla moved to Cambridge University in the UK in 1937. She worked under renowned professor of neurochemistry, Dr. Derek Richter, at Cambridge's Biochemical and Physiological Laboratory. Under Dr. Derek, Kamla became the first Indian recipient of the scholarship from University of Bombay for Springer Research. Her research was about characterization of monoamine oxidase, an enzyme involved in metabolism of neurotransmitters. This enzyme is produced by the liver and essentially works to recycle the neurotransmitters once they have done their job. During this time, she also earned Sir Nathubai scholarship. Soon after this, Dr. Richter left Cambridge. Kamla moved to work at the research lab of Dr. Robert Hill. Dr. Hill was a legend in his own right and is famous for his work on properties of hemoglobin, myoglobin and Hill reaction in photosynthesis. Dr. Hill was also famous for his research and discoveries about cytochrome C, an enzyme known to exist in yeast and animals. It is an important compound involved in respiratory and metabolism processes. Guided by Dr. Hill, Kamla began her research into this enzyme and discovered its existence in higher plants, proving that this enzyme was involved in the respiratory process of all aerobic organisms. Her discovery followed further research into this enzyme as a way to compare lineages and study evolution. Impressed by her work, her mentor suggested that she apply for a fellowship to work with Professor Frederick G. Hopkins. Professor Hopkins was a Nobel laureate whose discoveries about importance of vitamins in diet had revolutionized our knowledge of biochemistry and nutrition. She won the fellowship and was accepted into the program without any conditions. Kamla's research during this period remains uncredited, so we can only guess that she worked on biochemistry of glutathione, ascorbic acid, and related enzymes. Encouraged by Professor Hopkins, she submitted her thesis on universality of the cytochrome C enzyme. Her thesis, although incredibly fast at 14 months and unusually short at 40 pages long, satisfied her examiners. At the age of 27, she was the first Indian woman to get a PhD in science discipline. She received a lot of offers from US pharmaceutical companies but decided to return to India. Her reasons for returning are unclear. However, her son Anil says, quoting, She was patriotic and actually returned home from Cambridge to give her might to the freedom movement. Very influenced by Mahatma. She did take part in rallies in Bombay. She may have earned a Nobel Prize had she not returned. Her family adds, quoting, She gave up jewellery and wore only khadi saris. In India, she held major positions at many research institutes. She served as the head of the new department of biochemistry at Lady Harding's College, New Delhi. After which, she moved to the Nutrition Research Laboratory, Konur, as its assistant director. There, she researched effects of vitamins and worked on quantifying vitamin content in food. Due to lack of opportunities for growth, she was thinking of resigning from her position at the Nutrition Research Lab. During that time, she received a marriage proposal from an actuary, Sri Madhav V. Sohoni. As per her son Anil, this was not an arranged marriage. However, it was with the permission of Kamla's father. She accepted the proposal and moved with Sri Sohoni to Bombay. She applied for and was selected as a professor of biochemistry at the biochemistry department of the Royal Institute of Science in Bombay. She continued her research into nutrition value of common foods. She also encouraged and inspired her students to research nutrition and digestibility of products which could be used by rural Indians such as paddy, milk and legumes. Many of her research students went on to become distinguished scientists. The first president of India, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, asked her to study Neera, which is a traditional drink made from palm nectar for its nutrition value. She found that it greatly improved health in children and reduced mortality rate of pregnant women. She received the national award for contributions. 
While working at Royal Institute of Science, she was kept away from directorship, despite qualification for four years. She attributed this to internal politics. She was finally appointed director, at which her ex-mentor, Dr. Derek Richter, remarked she had made history for being the first lady director of such a big science institute. Remarkably, during her period as the director of the institute, she did not deny any application based on the candidate's gender. She was an active member of the Consumer Guidance Society of India and wrote many articles for their magazine on customer safety. She was later elected president of the society in 1982. During her time at CGSI, she also designed a kit which could be used by common people to test purity of food ingredients. She went on to win the National Award for Excellence and Contribution to Science in 1997. In 1998, the Director General of Indian Council of Medical Research invited Dr. Kamla Sohoni and facilitated her at a ceremony in New Delhi for her work. During standing ovation of that ceremony, she collapsed. A few days later, at a hospital, she passed away. Dr. Kamla persisted despite the challenges. Not only did she thrive in her career, she also managed to have relationships and a family along the way. Her children remember Dr. Kamla as, quote, a very remarkable lady. Her son Anil says, she was an absolute mother, cooked the food every day, ran a neat and clean, well-functioning home, always had time for her two sons and husband. She was much admired and appreciated by everyone in the family and extended family too, In quote. Dr. Kamla Sohani was a pioneer for women's equality in India and a role model for any woman making her way in step. The times have changed. When Dr. Kamla was doing her MSc, her batch had only three women. Now, women make up nearly 38% of India's doctoral graduates. But the struggle continues as they make up only 11% of the doctorates hired by Indian businesses.